The No New Friends Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. For the best in below-the-waist grooming, visit manscaped.com. Use promo code NNF for 20% off. That is manscaped.com. Kind of mess up if you think about it. Like we get this whole, we get like, what, 10 to 14 days off, depending on whether. And then these poor Jewish kids... They're like, oh, I can't wait until it's like a middle of the Wednesday, like in the middle of in the beginning of December. Like, oh, I'm going home and and I'm lighting the menorah at Hanukkah. Like, I mean, they don't get off. They have to go to school the next day. They do get like they do get mm-hmm. like what? There, there's eight eight nights, right? So they do get eight. Mm-hmm. They do Seven get, days. They do get eight presents. Yeah. Now again, I, I I feel bad. I feel bad because I get like eight presents in the first ten minutes of Christmas, and then <laughs> then right, I open the rest right. of my forty <laughs> days. Right? There's no cap. Like there's no cap. And you know what? Smart, there is no cap. Smart, yeah. smart on the Jews. I might become Jew. Wish because only eight gifts, right? <laughs> like you're capped out at eight. If you give nine, you're a try hard Jew, right, Sarah? Is that true? <laughs> I never thought of it being like the cheap way out, honestly. <laughs> Until now. You have, good, you have good Jewish parents, Sarah. That's why. <laughs> I guess so. Broadcasting from the Sandpiper Vacation Studios, it's time for the No New Friends Podcast. The podcast for adults who love to laugh at adulting. The good, the bad, and the funny. Okay, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. It's showtime. It's showtime. That's right. You're listening to the No New Friends podcast, voted number one by their friends and family. This is indeed the podcast for adults who love to laugh at adulting. And as a reminder, the No New Friends podcast is a finalist for Orlando Weekly's Best Local Podcast. Additionally, Mr. Scott Maffei is a finalist for Best Local Radio Voice. So go ahead to vote.orlandoweekly.com and leave a vote in those two categories. I am your host for this evening, the sophisticated gentleman. And joining us, as always, everybody's favorite food truck critic, Sarah. Hello. Our producer, Alex. Hey, nice to see you all. And the master of mirth, the scumbag reselling hoarder himself, Chris. In my loneliness, or perhaps because of it, I've learned not to judge people, to take people as I find them, not as others find them, and most of all, to give complete and unquestioning faith to the people I love. My diary? (laughs) (laughs) I actually, this is a very relevant uh, quote. I have no idea if it's a good quote or not, but it's very relevant. To something we were literally just talking about two minutes before we came on. A movie that you might have just seen because it just came out. Asteroid City, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny? I think it's from Asteroid City. Um, I did Google Asteroid City quote. I I, 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 uh, I don't know if this is a prominent... Uh, apparently it's not a prominent quote in the movie. You didn't get the good quote. Okay. So you... Okay. I was, I was throwing you a softball there. It's your first day on the job. We'll, we'll you know... Get the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> now, let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. Chris, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, in all seriousness, you are probably wondering why I'm hosting tonight. Well, Scott was not supposed to be here for this episode. Uh, Scott is now here for this episode, but Scott is a few drinks in, and Scott does not host or does not drink while hosting. Uh, but he is here joining us. I will be hosting, though. So, Scott, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. I don't have any clever uh, response or movie quote or anything. I guess if I was any better, I'd be you. I, I don't know. That's the cliche guest response. Awesome. Happy to hear that. Now, let's go ahead and dive into uh, a conversation topic that's really been digging at me. So, we're about around the midpoint of July right now, and... Can you kind of hear those sleigh bells jingling, ring ting tingling too? That's right. It's Christmas in July season. You know, I, I'm very excited for the Christmas season, only a few months away, one of my favorite times of year. How about you guys? Any favorite Christmas memories now that we've approached the summer? My Christmas memories are making fun of the, the Jewish kids in school that can't celebrate Christmas. Uh, that is fun. I always yeah, love that is doing fun. that. Yeah. yeah. Us, and singing the dreidel song. You know, dreidel, dreidel, dreidel. It's dreidel pretty much Catholic people. And when it's dry and ready. So close. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of messed up if you think about it. Like we get this whole, we get like what, 10 to 14 days off depending on whether. And then these poor Jewish kids. They're like, oh, I can't wait until it's like a middle of the Wednesday, like in the middle of in the beginning of December. Like, oh, I'm going home and and I'm lighting the menorah at Hanukkah. Like they don't get off. They have to go to school the next day. 
they do get like they do get mm-hmm. like what there there's eight eight nights right so they do get eight mm-hmm. they, do get, days, they eight do get eight presents yeah. now again I, f- I i feel bad i feel bad because i get like eight presents in the first 10 minutes of christmas and then then <laughs> right, i open the rest right, of my right. 40 days <laughs> right there's no cap like there's no cap and you know what smart, there is no smart, cap. Yeah. smart on the jews i might become jewish because only eight gifts right <laughs> like you're capped out at eight if you give nine you're a try hard jew right sarah is that true <laughs> I never thought of it being like the cheap way out on <laughs> until now. You have, good, you have good Jewish parents, Sarah. That's why. I guess so. <laughs> that that is. I never thought about that either. I'm like, oh, eight days of presents, but it's only eight, so it's very low that's ceiling. It. There's a cap. Uh, yeah, there's a cap. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, there's a cap. Well, not only that, but like my parents used to be like, okay, you get your gifts, but you get one big mm. gift, and you get to pick what oh. night you want that on. So it was either like. You know, one year it was an Xbox, one year it was a TV. So they're oh, wow. good, but I only got one and I had to pick when it was. So if I picked first night, I was screwed. Was I was it. getting yeah. socks and underwear uh, and <laughs> stuff like that for the other seven yeah, nights. See? So what night did you go with then? Well, if you got it the first night, you can use it for a longer time. Mm, it's true. That's, oh, that's true. I always chose the last night. Yeah, save the best for last. I'm like that too, Sarah. I always like, if I have a, a if I order a steak, I'm ordering, I'm eating the sides first and then I'm eating a cold steak at the end because I'm saving the best that's for That's actually last. a sign of a mental <laughs> disorder, Scott. I don't, that's not really saving something best for last. You should actually talk to you your doctor no about idea. that. You have no idea. That's actually very concerning. You have no idea. I don't like, I don't like my food mixing yeah, either. That's, I can't do it. We should probably cut this short and we should probably get you medical attention. I'm actually worried for you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now that you guys are making fun of Hanukkah, anyone want to touch Kwanzaa as well? <laughs> I don't know anything about Kwanzaa, but does that really surprise anybody? I, wait, I, don't, wait. I don't see holidays. There's no, there's no representation here, so I don't so know we if we can. It. That's, true. Uh, that is true. I'm representation for true. the Jews, you know. I, I give you honorary Jew status Wednesday evenings at 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> we, have the, we get the Jew card <laughs> every, every, right. every Wednesday. We, you know, Kwan- we do have our Jew card. see, now with Kwanzaa, it's, to me, it's just like a, it, it's a holiday. So I don't really see holidays. Um, I just see them all as celebrations. I don't see holidays at all. <laughs> Your holiday holiday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, interesting that you mentioned that, Chris. You said you view holidays as celebrations. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people in this society who view holidays as something else, an opportunity to make money. Mm. That's right. I'm talking about the corporations. They've co-opted Christmas in July. Christmas in July used to be a time for happiness and family and remembering times that are only about five months away. Now it's all about car sales and mattress sales. Mm, and that's true. happened with so many holidays. It's really gotten me fired up. They've taken some of the best holidays of the year and commercialized them. Thanksgiving, you know, on Black Friday, that's all about, you know, get away from your family, get in the line. And I'm sure many people would love to get away from their families at that point. But I don't know, man. Tired after all that turkey. A little insensitive, right? It's, um, but we'll cut that. We'll, we'll cut what you said out. We'll replace it. It's African American Friday. <laughs> <laughs> So all these Christmas and July ads were making me think about how fired up I am that President's Day, one of the greatest holidays of the year, has been co-opted by the corporations. They're taking President's Day away from the American public. We can't celebrate it the way you you used to. It's all about sales on mattresses, sales on cars. I am sick and tired of it. I am declaring war on capitalism for what they've done to President's Day. Oh, okay. I'm going to side with Sarah here, who hasn't even spoken up. I love the sales. Anytime I can get a discount, I'm down with it. Sarah, you're with me, right? I don't even have to say anything. Absolutely. <laughs> I scour the internet for better sales than the, are, than the sales that are already going on. <laughs> Brian, what is your beat? I, I I get it. I get it. You're taking holidays and well, not just holidays. Into- President's Day is one of the top three holidays of the year. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't get gifts on President's Day. I, I still well, have to work. There's no cards that I receive. There's no wait. Hold on, uh, Chris. Can you give us the top ten President's Day songs real quick, please? Uh, Yankee Doodle. <laughs> Oh, Yankee Doodle. Uh, Yankee Doodle. Ooh. Um, <laughs> proud to be an American. Uh, the national anthem. Go. The national uh, anthem. Bruno <laughs> Bruno Mars, the one song with the take a bullet trade through my brain. Grenade. That's a JFK song. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That just blew my mind. I mean, you can also play the music from our American cousin for Abe Lincoln. That's the show he was watching when he was shot. There, oh. there you go. <laughs> um, you know, I'm going to get Steve the intern. This is really a banger segment. 
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the St- Steve the intern actually on this to uh, determine whether or not there are President's Day songs. I mean, <laughs> I have a President's Day playlist of music on YouTube that I play every year. Um, right, <laughs> sophisticated gentleman, you just listen to Hail to the Chief on repeat, don't you? No, actually. Um, let me see. Let me take a look. You can cut this. That it, what while was, I'm what, was it. Uh, what was Trump's song? Um, like that they, they like, We are the champions by Queen, right? No, there was there was more. Was there. Oh, was? I won't back down. No, I won't back down. And then he also he's also on that one with the January sixth choir now. <laughs> I'm dead serious. I wish I was making that up. Should we put that as a President's Day song? It's uh it's it's a song by the January sixth choir, and it's all people that were wrongfully convicted. Not my words. Wrongfully convicted Stop. on January sixth. They, had, they and, have a January sixth yes, choir. And and uh and Trump, uh they got Trump to come on and like read the constitution or something like dory i forget what it is but they're like doing an excerpt it's like a voiceover oh, yeah, yeah, he's on it and it's uh yeah so you, yeah if you look up the um <laughs> it's like for the, the the new year's song the all anxiety or whatever where they play like different clips from the year um so that's that's what they did with the January Six Choir. Yeah, here it is January Six Prisoners Choir. Um, Justice for All is the name of the January Six Prisoners Choir. And, well, that's what Variety magazine. It's actually just called the January Six Choir. Uh, featured on featuring Donald Trump reaches number one on iTunes. And uh, okay, so oh, I'm Stop. sorry, it's not the January Six Choir. It's the J Six. <laughs> J6 Prison Choir. It's got a new single, Justice for All, featuring former President Donald Trump from the J6 Prison Choir, reached number one. Um, the song includes the choir singing the Star Spangled Banner from jail before it cl- before it climaxes with the prisoners chanting USA, USA. Then Justice for All. Uh, the Justice for All track has had the performance of the national anthem interrupted by clips of President Trump reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> <laughs> There's also other favorites like Stop the Vote and Let's Go Brandon. And you can order yours today by calling 1 800 Go to Jail. That's 1 800 Go to Jail. And uh, if you order yours now, you also get your white robe and hat. Just call that number right now 1 800 Go to Jail for your free J- J6 choir cd featuring everybody's favorite president donald j trump and your white uh, i'm uh, i'm sending now, the link to their website in chat because their link is uh, their website is amazing um you Scott, this their- reminds me of a song that you actually appeared on um, famous on youtube called the sex offender shuffle <laughs> <laughs> We have the, uh, okay, so uh, j6prisonchoir.com. Sorry, we have to dive into this a little bit. Uh, their mission statement on here, if you will. Uh, we can do hashtag j6pc um, for the j6 uh, prison choir. Uh, JC, j6 prison choir consists of indiv- individuals who have been incarcerated as a result of their involvement in the January 6, 2021 protest for election integrity. Okay. Uh, after Donald J. Trump stated, I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. The J6 PC continues to make their voices heard <laughs> through the power of music <laughs> and sings the Star Spangled Banner every evening before bed. That's a tr- that's a real thing. It says there. You can buy their record, Justice for All, um, for ninety nine US dollars. <laughs> uh, what? Or, or you can get it in gold for one hundred ninety nine dollars. Now this is a vinyl record, so or you can stream it for free. Pretty special. <laughs> it is pretty special. <laughs> and um, and the, the album cover is a black stone wall with. <laughs> A jail cell window with bars over it, with the American flag peering through the jo- the, the jail cell. I, I can't believe oh. they have something black on the cover. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only black thing that's featured on this record, actually, Ryan. Um, and you can join the cause uh, at the bottom. I think should we should we join the cause? Uh, should we enter our email, Scott? To see, I'm gonna I'm gonna enter the no new friends. But email. Scott doesn't need a white robe and up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to join their mailing list, their emailing list. Maybe we'll do updates. Oh, Maybe we'll do updates oh my of, of what they're. Uh, there's, oh, there's a shop too. Oh, never mind. The car is empty. Oh, sophisticated gentleman. Yes. Not only do they have the black vinyl, but they also have a red uh, vinyl. They have a gold vinyl, 
for 199 and for 149 you can get a justice for all vinyl record that's red white and blue wow that's something so this kind of reminds me you you going through all those colors talking about race reminds me of a song we had to sing back in fifth grade on mlk day it would be considered majorly offensive now this actually might have to be cut out of the episode we as elementary schoolers had to sing the lyrics all men are created equal black white red or yellow or brown <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I remember this so vividly. I don't know why. Sophisticated gentlemen, I remember singing a variation of that same song. We talked about it all the time. It's okay. It doesn't matter what color you are. Uh, white, red, black, brown, yellow, purple, whatever. Wow. Um, real quick, a selling point to Justice for All by the J6 uh, Choir is... 45 I on love a 45 that, actually that's right donald j trump was the 45th president and this vinyl record is a seven inch 45 rpm what does the seven inches so refer it's an to? opportunity to not his penis uh it's an opportunity to get 45 on a 45 mm. i love that actually um i might have to buy this album i might have to buy this album Oh, I'm totally buying this. This is going to go right next to the. This is going to be our music. This is going to go right next to the Beetlejuice sign in your background. Got to get you. you got to get the. You got to get the red, white, and blue. Um, red, white, and blue. One blue of each. Edition. I have to. I have to. Well, speaking of America and speaking of the presidents, Sarah, do you have a Carter Watch update for us? Oh, oh my goodness. All right, please hold. I believe he did celebrate an important event this past week. He, yeah, he did. Milestone. He did. He just had his anniversary, but what anniversary was it? See, I have to make sure I have this correct. It's his 77th anniversary. 77. Yeah, wow. Which was celebrated on July 7th. That was 7-7, their 77th anniversary. Because guess what? Google says that he's still eating ice cream, so. <laughs> <laughs> he's celebrating National Ice Cream Month up. now. Making it happen. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's national yeah, that's why it is. He's just pre-gaming for it. <laughs> All right, you are listening to the No New Friends podcast. After the break, we'll have a phone call, actually, from yours truly, plus some great conversations between the three of us and, of course, so much more. You're listening to the No New Friends podcast. St. Augustine, Florida, 2022. You're on the Night Watchman Ghost Tour with all of your ghoul friends. The air grows colder, you turn the corner, and there she is, Ghost Mary. Okay, you probably won't run into Ghost Mary. Um, you may see a ghost named Mary. I'm not really 100% sure, but the tour guides for the Night Watchman Ghost Tour from Sea America Tours do know it is the only 4D ghost tour in St. Augustine. So if you have ever wondered what a ghost smells like, well, now is your chance. And right now they have a scary good deal going on. Enter the promo code NNF, as in no new friends, and receive 25% off your Night Watchman Ghost Tour. So visit them at seeamericatours.net. That is S-E-E, -E, americatours.net. Okay, bye! If you'd like to hear all of our episodes, all of our past episodes, just visit our website, nonewfriendspodcast.com. All of our links to all of our old episodes are there. If you didn't understand an inside joke or just wanted to re-listen to something, just check it out. It's nonewfriendspodcast.com, or you can check us out on all streaming platforms. Psst. Hey, you. You want to join a cult? Well, this might be your lucky day. For just $2 a month and a simple blood oath, you can join our clubhouse and become a friend with benefits. In addition to the amazing feeling of donating to the poor, you will have access to Patreon-exclusive content, live shows, and maybe even a behind-the-scenes look at my secret stack. To get started, head on over to nonewfriendspodcast.com and hit join our clubhouse. Can't wait to see you at the initiation ceremony. Oh, and in the chat during our live shows, of course. This is Larry Hankin, and you're listening to the No New Friends Podcast. Oh, say can 
Welcome back to the No New Friends Podcast. As a reminder, vote.orlandoweekly.com, best local podcast, and best local radio voice, Mr. Scott Maffei. So go ahead, go to that website now. I'd say vote for us, but I'm not always on the show, so vote for them. Now, um... You're part of the family, sophisticated thank you. gentleman. Thank you, Vin Diesel. You look like Vin Diesel. <laughs> now, um, actually, I called in a few weeks ago when Scott asked me to create a compilation segment for the podcast while I was still Amish. Um, I feel like the little kid showing the art to the parents right now saying, ooh, you like it? <laughs> so, um... <laughs> Uh, sophisticated gentleman, I got to cut you off real quick because we've got uh, a call from you, the sophisticated gentleman, and I am now going to call this segment Travels and Tribulations. So uh, here we go. Here's uh, Travels and Tribulations. Are you guys ready for Travels and Tribulations? Yeah, it sounds hot. We are. <laughs> what shall it bring when the gentleman rings on Travels and Tribulations? All right, so the last time we heard from Sophisticated Gentleman, he was with the Amish. And uh, I really wasn't expecting a call from him this week because his his phone got taken away from him. So uh, we got to see we got to see how this happened. Is it is it is it uh, two cups and a string? Uh, is it carrier pigeon? We have no idea. So here we go. Take it away, Sophisticated Gentleman. What a lovely day to be Amish. <laughs> oh, golly gee, that pigeon's flying right at me. Got a message Golly attached gee. to it. it. Says, make a clip show for me right now or else. And it's signed Scott. Very strange. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear goodness. There's a hawk flying at me. It, it also has a message attached to it. it. Says, create a clip for the holiday of the day. What could that mean? <laughs> Holy crap, it's an emu! It has a note on it as well. It says, host an episode for me. It's also signed <laughs> Scott. Seems like Scott's spending all his wife's money on these birds. After that or that chip golf ball idea finally paid off. <laughs> Just kidding, we knew that wasn't going anywhere. Kind of like Chris's conversation with the mom at that ballpark. Or Mary's conversation with the cardboard cutout. Or Scott's conversation with any child in a park while wearing a fedora. There's tons of theme with the No New Friends podcast. Anywho, it sounds like Scott needs a lot of help digital wise, which means I can't be Amish. But I do have a solution, thank goodness. If I step inside this Apple store here, maybe, just maybe, the technology will take away my Amishness. All right, here goes nothing. Stepping inside. My Amishness. Ah, oh, God. I feel the technology coursing through my veins. The, the need to churn butter is drifting away from me. Well, I don't think I'm Amish anymore. At least I actually know how to share video on Discord, unlike some people. So, hey, that's something. Well, hey, it's good to be back. No devil, no Amish, just the sophisticated gentleman. I'd better pick up my phone and call the No New Friends podcast to tell them what's going on. Oh, looks like my phone's already recording. That's convenient. <laughs> Anyways, while I'm here at the Apple Store, it reminds me of some of the worst products Apple has ever come up with. For example, there was the iPod sock, which was essentially a piece of fabric that could hold an iPod. I'm sure Chris used it for something else. And then there was... <laughs> Who's that? Who's coming after me? <laughs> oh no, it's the Amish. They're angry that I forsook... For forsaken for suck it. However it is, they're angry that I'm not Amish anymore. And I don't know what to do. They're chasing me. There is one possibility though. Maybe I can give them a gift. Such a good gift that they'll have no reason to come after me anymore. I don't like Scott anytime he wants to go to Costco. Except they don't think something that you can buy at 7-Eleven is a great gift. No, instead I have a great gift in mind for the Amish. 
It is, of course, the Holy Grail. Perhaps if I go on a quest for the Holy Grail and I find it and I give it to the Amish, they'll stop chasing me. I think this is the only solution. There's a guy I knew a while ago who got locked up in jail. He was searching for the Grail. Maybe he'll be able to help me. It'll take me about three weeks to get to him, though, just for plot convenience and everything. Well, <laughs> I'll call you guys when I'm able to get to the jail to talk to my contact. And until then, why is the plural of goose geese, but the plural of moose isn't meese? Oh, great question. <laughs> That's a really good question. There's a lot, because, going, a lot to dissect there. Yeah, the English language is literally the most complicated and dumbest language ever. Uh, yes, so a lot, a lot to lot to digest here. So I'm excited uh, you're on the search for the Holy Grail. I, I love this. Should be interesting. We'll this. see where the journey takes me. Hopefully there's uh, an Indiana Jones tie-in because I love Indiana Jones and all things Indiana Jones. So that's... That's exciting. Over here taking notes. <laughs> now, speaking of Indiana Jones and speaking of, you know, taking time to do things, you guys have been on this earth for a little bit longer than me. Um, there's a bit of a generation Wait, gap. Did you just call us old? <laughs> I'm going to. First time I've ever been called uh, old. Hi, I'm the Sophia Gentleman. <laughs> Welcome back to the No New Friends podcast. Pod <laughs> <laughs> but, thanks, thanks for trying uh, to host today, Ryan. Uh, well, you can, you don't let the door hit you on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> in all honesty, though, as somebody who's just starting out on my adulting journey, I figured it would be helpful if I could take this time while I'm hosting to talk to some folks who've been on the adulting journey a little bit longer than I have on a mm. podcast about adulting, where sometimes adulting is talked about in the adulting uh, question of the week. Oh, oh wait a minute. Sorry. Um, but <laughs> in all honesty, I would love to hear from you guys, because starting out trying to be independent, go grocery shopping every three weeks, and trying to make meals, and trying to mm. keep the place clean, and, you know, go to the post office. There's a lot going on. So I would love if you guys have some adulting tips that you could share with me to help me succeed in life. Marry a really adulty adult because that's what I did. Yeah. Because I am failing yeah. miserably as an adult. Uh, marry someone who adults better than you. That's my number one tip. Yeah. Um, delegate. So by delegate, I mean, either become very wealthy or marry someone who's very wealthy so that all these things that you have no idea what to do, just pay someone to do them for you or <laughs> pay someone to consult you, uh, about what to do. So basically like, um, uh, you know, you know what the best advice I ever got was, um, that adults don't have a clue either. So when you're younger, you always think, man, can't wait till I'm an adult so I know how to do X, Y, and Z, right? And like when you're when you're younger, it's like, man, I hear a lot about this like tax stuff, and uh, I'm sure you know when I'm older, I'll know all about that stuff. And, and and the biggest secret in all of adulting is that even adults have no idea what's going on. Like we, we nobody has any idea, and I think that's the biggest secret in almost life is that nobody knows what they're doing. So I think my best advice to give you is pretend you know what you're doing, because then then you're gonna fool a lot of people. Be confident in everything you do, because even when you're wrong, if you're, as long as you're confident, people are going to believe you. That's um, how a lot of people got elected president. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sophisticated gentlemen, back to what I said, marry someone who's a better adult than you. So, 4th of July, uh, picture it, July 4th, uh, 2023, I am driving back from, <laughs> from Longwood, Florida, and uh, was at my sister's for 4th of July driving back um may have been uh, speeding a little bit may have um i wasn't drinking that did you get pulled happen. over for gang activity i did i wish i wish i would have gotten pulled over that would have been better than what happened so i'm pulling into my neighborhood and all of a sudden i hear this loud banging from my car it wasn't okay. you it wasn't me now banging is not something you have I, someone in your trunk not the, <laughs> no not the trunk it's coming from the hood uh sophisticated gentleman and so I, I pretend that maybe it didn't exist. I park my car. I go to sleep for the night. I wake up in the morning and I'm going to clean up my car because something told me I may need to relocate my car to somewhere else. 
So I try to move it forward into the shade so I can clean out my car. No, this loud banging is coming on. The, ch the oil light comes on. SG, I don't know what to do. Okay, I'm freaking out. I call my wife. I'm like, I my car is done. And she's like, what do you mean? And I was like, well, let me turn it on so you can hear it. It's a bop, 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 bop. And she's like, okay, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. And I'm like, I, I don't know what to do. And she said, okay, reach into your wallet, grab the AAA card, call AAA because we get free tows up to 100 miles. Then call the dealership, see if you can get into the dealership. And then do this, it, like very, very calmly. And I'm like, are you a wizard? I never knew that I that I had I married a witch, a magical witch. Uh, I didn't know that that you know was a, a thing that she had up her sleeves. Uh, so she she guided me through this journey of uh, getting my car towed and fixed. So marry up. That's 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 <laughs> that's the moral of the story. Um, if they if if you if they if they give you the sex, then they are not they're not very adulty, and you're on your own. Uh, if they withhold, then they have their their stuff together. You're good to go. Don't be racist either. I think that's another pretty good uh, <laughs> pretty good uh, <laughs> advice. I think that's pretty sound advice, right? Go for house arrest, not jail time. Yeah, that's a very teenage thing to do is <laughs> is being racist. When you're when you're an adult, you're not racist anymore. Well. Most of us, hmm. the J six choir might uh, <laughs> might might, uh, might attest, uh, might, might might refute what I just said. I don't know, Scott. Can you give your buddy a call <laughs> and ask him <laughs> and ask him what their stance on that is? Yeah, I would say. Um, um, so, would you guys want to talk a little bit about Kwanzaa on that? <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would love to. I will pull up Chat Chat GPT right now. <laughs> Generate something nice to say about Kwanzaa. Um, uh, more, more, more adulting advice. Um, live with your parents as long as you possibly can. Mm, that's um, a good one. And, yeah. And then when you can't anymore, just move into the attached shed to their house. Yeah, then you're good exactly. To go. <laughs> then yeah, never, never move too far. Um, live with them as long as you can, and um, and you only live once. So spend as much money as you possibly can. And you know what? I would go as far as saying, uh, spend as much money as you possibly can't. Like going to crippling debt. Um, you can't take <laughs> it with you. It's going to happen no. anyways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Your debt's not going to... Uh, you know, all these people are saying, oh, buy a house, buy this. Well, that's debt, right? So why not buy the newest iPhone every year, right? Yeah, because that's when you're dead, it, the, your debt's not going to matter. No, no. It, you can't take it with you. Don't I have kids. It. Don't have I mean, kids. I mean, your children No, don't, don't have kids. <laughs> no problem. You die, everything goes away. Who's going to pick up your debt? No one. The big companies get screwed in the it, end, right? It won't matter to me anymore. It, it's done. That's true. Too. We're screwing over the companies who screwed over President's Day. We're taking our revenge. Exactly. It's full circle. Full, full circle. circle. I love the way you guys are thinking. Speaking of saving money, Sarah, what do you? What's your tip? Um, I, listen, I was just raised that way. You know, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's it's not something that I can teach anybody. It's just the way I was raised. Tradition. Actually, tradition. Actually, Chris probably feels me on the on the reselling hoarder end of it. You know, I'm married. But I'm married. I don't feel. You. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> another adult, another adulting tip. Another adulting tip. Be faithful. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. What, what were you saying about hoarding? I blacked out. You know what? Honestly, no, I did Chris too. Thought no, you said hoarding, <laughs> not hoarding. I, oh, you mean like collecting stuff? Oh yeah, that's where I was going with that. <laughs> Wow, a lot of triggers for me there. A, a lot, a lot of, a lot of triggers. Uh, kind of like on January sixth, full circle again. <laughs> <laughs> We're connecting so many dots. And do you know? Do you know uh, what large dots are called? Balls, right? Balls. And listen, if you're looking uh, for cleanly shaven balls, have no fear. Manscaped has the product for you. That's the Lawnmower 4.0. I use it uh, pretty regularly. There's a patented ceramic guard so you don't get any nicks or cuts. Just go to manscaped.com. Use promo code NNF to save 20% off your purchase. So, speaking of full circles, Balls. Speaking of things that can be eaten, thank you for bringing that up, Scott. Uh, probably the biggest <laughs> trouble that I've had with adulting is figuring out what to make for dinner each uh, night because I get home ooh. and I am exhausted. So every weekend, you know, I have a three weekend rotation because I go to the grocery store every three weeks. Right. So weekend one is either pasta and bolognese sauce or, you know, some kind of pasta and meatballs. Weekend two is chicken parm. 
Weekend 3 is enchiladas. It's nice and easy to kind of go into a robot mode. So you put on the record, you know, you get a glass Which of record? wine ready or... Um, usually Frank Sinatra. The I, knew, I knew you were going to say Frank Sinatra. I was about to say it just to tease you. I was like, it's definitely Frank Sinatra. He puts the fedora on, uh, you know, sings my way as he's cooking. The- Why do you have cameras in my apartment? <laughs> I was hoping you were going to say justice for all. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next one. Full Maybe circle next again. One. Round three. But do you guys have any? tips for cooking and preparing no sophisticated gentlemen listen (laughs) you do not want to take cooking advice from me at all okay my wife cooks all of our meals here and there's a specific reason for that so today today was my daughter's 18th birthday okay and i was in charge of grilling the steaks okay now we have not used our grill in about two years so i fired it up this morning just to make sure it was working i needed to clean it because it was pretty gross it hadn't been used for two years so i cleaned it off real good i'm ready to go so i've got i've got my daughter's stepfather uh with me we're gonna be we're gonna be the man man i I click the tongs two times to make sure the tongs are working i turn on the propane i light the thing SG, a huge fireball comes out and I'm like, holy crap, what was that? And, uh, and my, my daughter's stepfather says, well, that made your ass pucker up a little bit tighter, huh? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Then I look at my arm and I'm like, <laughs> what is this? I singed off my arm hairs. So there was burnt arm hair everywhere. I mean, it, it like now I look like a swimmer that's like growing back their arm hairs where it's just these like little, um, these little, little stubbles. Like if you compare the two arms, they look nothing alike. <laughs> I now know what it's like to be gay with the shaved arms. And I, it's, it's a, it's a liberating feeling i may shave both arms now but you do not want to take cooking advice from me moving on i see well we're glad you're alive <laughs> well, yeah we're indifferent about it um sophisticated gentleman you know I, w- I was gonna start this episode saying you probably know scott isn't here he actually is no longer with us. <laughs> I, I decided not to go that route since you were here what were you gonna say though chris um a um tip for cooking is don't there's too many, like DoorDash is just so convenient. And when you have disposable income like yourself, like you're not, you're not paying for a house yet, right? Um, and even if you don't have disposable income, like American Express, I'll send you my referral code. We'll both get, you know, a bunch of points. Rack up those, rack up those DoorDash debt. Um, why pay, you know, $4 a meal when you can put it on your credit card and pay $20, uh, I mean, charge $20 and then never pay it off and end up paying like $60 for that DoorDash meal, but then getting a lot of really nice uh, uh, American Express points in the process. Hmm. I'm sensing that you enjoy debt. Uh, it's just a way of life. It's just a way of life. <laughs> yeah, it's not that I enjoy it, I just coped with it. I see. I see. Well, I've learned a lot today. Thank you, panel, for your <laughs> advice. Um, I'm not sure. I want to hear Sarah's, oh, yeah, cooking, Sarah's tips, cooking tips, though. Tips. I don't cook. That's why my husband cooks. You know, I do it for work, but I don't do it when I come home because, see, I when I cook for work, it's at a breakfast restaurant. So I can flip some eggs, cook some bacon. But if you want like a nice dinner, you know, candlelight, glass of wine. No, don't come to me. (laughs) This is this is why Sarah mixes different continents or different countries in her in her cooking, she may have an Italian dish with adobo? Uh, jalapenos in it, yeah, or adobo. Uh, she just mixes continental and Mexican. It's, it's a continental that's, breakfast. That's a stoner palate, is what that is. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> if it works, it works. If it tastes good, it tastes good. Let it happen. <laughs> well, on that note, I'm gonna start figuring out my meals for the week. Um, I've learned a lot <laughs> from you three. I'm not sure what I'll be applying this next week, but I appreciate the wisdom from the older generations. After the break, we've got Jersey Man versus Florida Man, Chris's Cliff Notes, and of course, so much more. You're listening to the No New Friends Podcast. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Hey, 
Hey there, Scott here. You all know I like to spend time wandering the neighborhood on my my big wheels or hanging out at the park with my fedora and my Bud Light. So I don't have time to clean my own house. That's why I've been using I Believe Services for the past six, seven years. And they're the best in commercial and residential cleaning. They're also doing carpet shampooing at such a reasonable price. Just check them out. That's IBelieveServices.us. Give them a call, 407-928-4595, and tell them that the No New Friends podcast sent you. Hey, everybody. Why don't you give the old Black Lincoln Collective podcast a listen? We're funny. We're fat. And we're here 24-7 at blcpodcast.com. Anytime you want to listen, anywhere, all your favorite podcast apps. Of course, we have a YouTube channel where you can stream live with the show. Check out our shorts. We're funnier the less you hear of us. That's been a Black League and Collective podcast at blcpodcast.com. There are three things that I hate in life. Taxes, nausea, and booking vacations. The first two I'm stuck with, but for the third, I use Sandpiper Vacations. Sandpiper Vacations is a small business that is LGBTQ plus owned and operated with travel advisors all over the country. Whether it's a cruise, a trip to a theme park, or an all-inclusive resort, Sandpiper has you covered. Oh, and I forgot to mention, it's free. Why book a vacation when you can have someone else do it for you? That's like choosing to take the stairs in a building that has an elevator. Leave the headaches of booking a vacation to someone else. Get your quote today at www.sandpipervacations.com and tell them that the No New Friends podcast sent you. Hey guys, comedian James John, and you are listening to the No New Friends podcast. Welcome back to the No New Friends Podcast. Again, Orlando Weekly. I'll plug it for the third time because it's just that worth it. Vote.orlandoweekly.com. Best local podcast and best local radio voice. You know who to vote for. I have a important question for you guys. Are you ready to play Jersey Man or Florida Man? Absolutely. I can't wait to play this game. This is Yay, my favorite game ever. Always. <laughs> Whether flipping a fan boat or crash in a truck, these states are filled with people who suck. So it's time for us to play. Each week, Ryan brings us two new stories. One is from Jersey, one is from Florida. It's up to us to determine which is which. Take it away, Ryan. Hey, guys, this is Ryan coming to you from the No New Friends newsroom located this week in Germany. While Chris was out of town, he got me a gift card to this place called Nothing But Ass. I figured I'd have to fly over and use it. I'm not sure what they sell there. I think it might be donkeys or donkey memorabilia or something like that. Anyways, the flight over was interesting. I saw a man get into it with a flight attendant after he tried to steal the microwave from her so he could do the announcements. I'm not sure where he flew in from, but judging by his haircut and how pale his skin is, it looks like he was at Chernobyl. And if you want to look like you've been at Chernobyl, use code no new friends at manscaped.com. Also, while sitting in the air terminal, somebody airdropped me something really strange. I thought it was somebody washing a hairless cat. Turns out it was just a FaceTime from Chrissy out in the shower. But Germany is such an interesting place. Now, with such a vibrant history, except for 12 years of it, some of the buildings here are almost as old as the movies that Sophisticated Gentleman references all the time. Oh, I wanted to look at a pack of cigarettes while I was here. I hear they have disgusting pictures on them of what you might become if you start smoking. Oh, God, this one must be the worst one ever. It's that picture of Scott with his cat on the toilet. Well, I'm never taking up smoking. Well, it sounds like they're about to play the German national anthem. While I respectfully listen to their anthem, let's get into this week's Florida Man or Jersey Man. Why did they change the German national anthem? So for our first story, vandals turn a beloved town fountain into a bubble bath. And for our second story, a man is banned for life from owning any pool business after scamming hundreds of people. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you have to break. Oh God, that was. I think Ryan, that may have been your best Florida man or Jersey man yet. I sincerely believe that. Oh, all right. Yeah, talk so about we're gonna have to talk second, about it, right? and then I don't even know what the stories were. But go- I got it. <laughs> I was not the best at school. <laughs> <laughs> so for extra credit in Spanish class, I 
I had I said to my, <laughs> said to my teacher, I said, hey, can I write a rap about about, <laughs> about Spanish each, each semester to get so I pass this class? And he said yes, because he said it was uh it promotes the <laughs> Spanish culture or something. <laughs> So that was one of my hit songs. Um, I love the way. Oh wait, no. I love the way you conjugate, right? Um, I love the way you conjugate. Yeah, wait, yes, it was. That was one of my hit songs. I love the way you conjugate. It got me a C in that. And for folks and who want to hear the full story, well. you can watch that as well. Go to YouTube, uh, CNA Films. And if you want to hear the full story about uh, Chris's on, videos, episode one sixty two of the No New Friends podcast, and episode I think fourteen of Dane interviews. That is correct. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was amazing. Easy. That was so good. <laughs> that was amazing. All right. So our new stories, as I recall, are turning a public fountain <laughs> into a bubble bath and a man being banned from using pool for scamming people. Scott, you don't usually go first, um, at least for this game. So uh, you, which one do you think is which? Uh, I'm going to go first one, Jersey, second one, Florida. No, no reasoning whatsoever. Christopher. My, my full name is Christian. What if it was? What if it actually was? <laughs> That'd be really awkward, first of all. Um, I think the bubble bath is New Jersey because a lot of homeless up here. And uh, I think the pool one is Florida. Sarah, what do you think? I'm going to have to agree, I suppose. I, I have no reasoning behind it either. I just think both could work in either place. I think the bubble bath, for, at least in my opinion, is Florida because the people there really need to clean up. You know, they've got like singed hairs on their arms. They really need like a spa day. <laughs> and then uh, I guess that leaves the pool scamming to Jersey. I mean, a lot of scumbag reselling hoarders and scammers up there. Let's find out which is which. So our first story is from New Jersey where police are on the lookout for vandals that dumped industrial strength bubble bath into the fountain near the police station. Park officials say it cost more than $3,500 to repair the fountain. Sarah's been banned from the fountain at her local mall after she dove in head first and started scooping up all the pennies. <laughs> so that means our second story is from Florida, where the owner of a pool business named Olympus Pools has been banned for life from the industry when investigations showed that he scammed 100 people with unfinished pools. I know of one Florida man that should be banned from all <laughs> pools in general. And in other news, an overdue book is finally returned to a library after 119 what? years. Scott said he's very sorry he forgot to return the book when he borrowed it back in high school. <laughs> That's it for me this week, guys. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you, Ryan. That was absolutely fantastic. Absolute masterclass. Now, Ryan made some fantastic jokes in that segment there. Uh, and they really did fly for this group here. Unfortunately, not every group is the No New Friends podcast. And I'm sure as we go through life, all of us make jokes that might not sit very well with mm. the best crowds. I know, Sarah, you were talking about something like that during the break. Yeah, I was. Well, I mean, there's, listen, being raised in a Jewish private school, all right, there's a lot of Jew jokes that float around. You have to find the right person to tell them to, that's for <laughs> sure. You know, I usually start off with, can you handle this? I told one a really bad one the other day, and I had to start it off exactly that way. Like, do you know anybody who this might apply to? No? Okay, great. Then I'm going to tell you this joke. And of course, at the end, she's like, Ooh, that was really bad. But then it by by the end of the day, she's like, you know what? Can you tell me that one more time? I gotta tell my husband when I get home. So it could be worse, I suppose. <laughs> that's that's entirely fair. But at least you have, you know, an a, ability to make that joke. Sure, it's worse if you like tell a family on the monorail at Disney World that you have a boring white name. Right <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> picture it, if you will. Uh, so I was trying to get into radio and I worked for promotions at a local country station here. It's called K92 FM. And <clears throat> I was at, uh, at an event working promotions, obviously, and I was there with the assistant director of promotions and one of the on-air personalities and the music directors. So they're like, Hey, do you, do you know any, any bad jokes? And I'm like, I do. Well, wait, what was it? What was the station called? <laughs> it was a country station. K92. Oh FM. gosh. So the first one I <laughs> said was, uh, do you know how much Jesus loves you? And, uh, 
and and it was like something like you know this much, and then he died. You know, uh, you know, with, uh, put the hands out. Yeah, <clears throat> I do have to say something. So, so you were mentioning your your Jesus joke, okay? So yesterday I'm watching Titanic with my eight year old. It's the first time she's ever seen it, and she's into it. And they're doing the I'm, you know, they're well. No, it was the scene where they're kissing, you know, and she's got her arms all out, and and they're hugging and whatever. And I went, oh, it's like Jesus. But I was thinking of the statue, like Rio de Janeiro. And she looked at me and she was devastated. <laughs> She's like, Jesus on the cross. Listen, I didn't think of that because I wasn't raised that way, you know? But I devastated the <laughs> poor eight-year-old at that moment. So I fell asleep after that. It's fine. She got to watch the rest of it or so. <laughs> you should watch Life of Brian next. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the three of us have in common. We all had uh, told Jesus jokes about his arm spread. I, uh, mine actually was under the influence of uh, anesthesia. I was being put under to go have surgery and they spread my arms out. They said, you know, spread your arms out wide. And, uh, and the last thing I remember getting put under was, I feel like Jesus. <laughs> and then, I, and then I, then I woke up. Uh, Jesus loves me apparently. I uh, I get worried about my sense of humor because I do have a very dark sense of humor. And I think those are the best senses of humor for the record. If you can't joke about it. Hey, you're not living. So I get worried when I go out and meet people for the first oh, time God, and there's alcohol yes. involved because I like to have a good time. I like to have a good time, you know. I and, like um, beer. Beer is very enjoyable. I enjoy <laughs> beer so much. Brett Kavanaugh over here. I like beer. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, and then when I get home, I write it on my calendar that I went to a party that night. Um, so, so uh, like, you know, Emily was like, hey, you don't meet my friends for the first time. You have game night. And then I get there and, you know, there's alcohol. So I, what's the fun of having one drink? That's not fun, right? That's why this is gone. Um, so <laughs> I... Uh, Two is too many. 14 is not enough. Exactly. 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 So you got it. And then, you know, Emily likes to designate a drive. That's why you go, you buy a fun car. Cause then you just be like, Hey, do you want to, do you want to drive the car tonight? Never and let then, her drive uh, it except for then. You, yeah. No, you can't drive my car until that one. And then she's hey. like, Oh yeah. Hey, it works. Um, so yeah, so I do get a little worried. I do get a little worried. Um, it turns out that, that just when you think you're very like, effed up like your sense of humor there's always someone that's worse there's always mm -hmm. someone's that someone that's worse and then you yeah, just kind of is uh, you sneak <laughs> 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 you always <laughs> that, that I, yeah, i'm laughing because it's probably true and that <laughs> and like you can say like your worst things it'll never be as worse as the other person in the room and I, i'm 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 uh privileged to be that person scott um if you ever listen, this is if, if if you're into dark humor, this is a great advertisement to join our Patreon because we have game nights where our humor gets oh, very, God. very dark. And um, we will never, and you never know them again. unless you're there. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you remember that? I was like, hey, guys, let me just record this. And I'll put it out for Patreon. And halfway in, I'm like, nope, I'm going to stop recording. And it is now deleted. <laughs> Now, Chris, it's funny that you mentioned people having darker senses of humor. Mm -hmm. um, this was not at all a story I planned to tell, but it fits the story. So, uh, senior year of high school, I was actually in a uh, male pageant for charity. Uh, oh. I think the video is still online of like the, the dance or whatever. What's it called, uh, just for Nick? Uh, so that he can <laughs> look at, look I'll tell up. you when we're not on air. I don't like to give out too much personal information. Uh, the people are already outside my door as it is. But. <laughs> we, we said we said sophisticated gentleman's from Ohio and he flipped out. I'm like, it's kind of a big state. You're fine. So we each had to do a specific act. So my act, I think, was the penultimate one in the show. Um, I, it was a Bob Ross painting sketch, so I had the wig, and I didn't have a beard at the time, so I had a fake beard at that point. Um, and I was wondering, you know, oh, maybe the Bob Ross sketch will make it to YouTube. Well, the guy who was up on the talent section before me walks out, and the stage is completely dark. And he looks around, and he's like, man, I didn't realize I was doing a Helen Keller sketch. <laughs> and they cut the video off before that guy. They said that the batteries magically ran out of the camera. I know they didn't. So now you can't find my Bob Ross sketch anywhere, for better or for oh. worse, but you can still find my um, dance to whatever the songs were. So, Wow. wow. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the type of age that, like, you really laugh hard at that. Yeah. I'm just kidding. True. I would laugh hard at that <laughs> right now. You know, I... I 
I do it a lot, uh, sophisticated gentlemen, where I'll I'll say something, I'll respond to something the same way that I would respond on this podcast. And I'm like, oh crap, I was using my podcast voice. Yeah. And, and, and I'm like, rec- it's a recurring issue for me too, Scott, is you have to separate podcast humor from real life humor. Right. It's like, yeah, pedophilia jokes don't really they don't play fare well they don't in real play. life. Well, no, no, I they do, might not I, play, they might not play here either. <laughs> <laughs> I do the I do the the whole no sex. That, that's my response mm. to things. I'm I always go back to that. Like, oh, if you know, maybe my wife would touch me or something. You know, it, it always goes back. I'm like, wait a second, I'm at work. Uh, <laughs> and people just start to feel bad for you. I saying that they don't even laugh, they just feel bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Nobody calls in on my shifts, and when I need coverage, <laughs> they're like, hey, yeah, I got you. No big deal. You know, I want you to have a good place. Well, I know a good place that we can go, because Chris, do you have any cliff notes for us? Oh, I do. It's been quite the show. A lot of stuff's happened, so nothing can stop this little boy from recapping the day. The Chris is Cliff's Notes way. So, you know, sometimes I like to bring in some headlines because some of these headlines of of the week are just too good to not joke about. So um, this one's kind of funny in a dark way. Uh, There's a headline in the news this week. Don't know if you guys saw, but the creepy guy who uh, who preyed on young athletes was brutally stabbed in jail. Did you see that one? Yeah. Yeah. Larry Nassar. You you died of gonorrhea and rotten hell. No, I was going to ask you how you're holding up, Scott. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, sophisticated gentleman, for that submission. <laughs> just a flesh wound. <laughs> so, so the just original, a flesh wound. The, the, the original joke, he said it was supposed to be since you weren't here. <laughs> we're going to make the joke. That's why you weren't here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, this Amazon is why f- I don't miss, because then you, no, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Makes jokes a little harder. Um, Amazon Prime Day just ended tonight. And a lot of good deals. And... Um, Totally unrelated note, but if anybody knows a good bankruptcy lawyer, please email us at no new friends podcast <laughs> at, at yahoo.com. It's for a friend. I'll forward Seriously. The address. Listen, if you ever go homeless, Chris, I've got a bunch of boxes in my garage now from uh, Prime Day. <laughs> Jesus. Um, just a random thought I had, but uh, they say to dress for the job you want. Scott, I'm glad that you're aspiring to be a middle aged lesbian art teacher today. <laughs> And if you want to see what I look like, you can just join our Patreon for as low as two dollars a month. There's our Patreon plug. Too good, too good to not say. Um, at the beginning of segment two, Scott accidentally called the sophisticated gentleman by his real name. I told him it's easy to slip up. Uh, judging by all his kids, he already knows that though. So oh, yeah. 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 fell on fell on deaf ears. Yeah. And it's speaking easy to slip up, hard to pull out. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of the sophisticated gentleman, we debuted a new jingle tonight. Scott is obsessed with jingles. I heard that he even has one for sex. Now, unfortunately, no one can attest to that, but I did. I, you know, I did, I did hear that he does have <laughs> one. Never gets played. I still haven't heard it. <laughs> um, I used to think really. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> there may be a jingle for every time I take a dump. You know, uh, <laughs> listen. I I I hire this jingle guy just for my own personal use. I'm just imagining the spider in the corner now, like on a banjo, just singing to Scott before. <laughs> 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 Sex banjo spider. <laughs> the, the, the jingle lasts longer than the actual. <laughs> it's only fifteen seconds. Uh, you're super, giving me too much credit, Chris. <laughs> it's super short. Like play it again at the end. Like the play it again at the end too. <laughs> play it again, Sam. <laughs> So, sophisticated gentleman, you sound super smart, and I used to think super highly of the sophisticated gentleman. I, you know, I met him in person. I thought he was one of the smartest people I ever knew, and uh, that was until he looked at Scott, Sarah, and I and thought, "Let me ask these people for adult <laughs> advice." <laughs> <laughs> Scott talked about how his car broke down and, you know, one of the things that his wife had up his sleeves was being able to figure out how to, you know, weasel her way out of that one. Right. Uh, to be completely fair, you know, he didn't know that, but uh, he also doesn't know anything else under her clothes. So <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. It's still a mystery. And uh, lastly, Scott used his girl for the first time in two years, which is unsurprisingly two more times than he's, he's used his penis in the last two years. Um, <laughs> he talked about how when he fired up the girl for the first time, it was a long time, giant fireball lit. The even more surprising thing to him was when the fire settled, there wasn't a wooden cross behind it. There, it was just a grill. <laughs> oh, my God. And those are my cliff notes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you, Chris. Oh. That was fantastic. It's been quite the show. A lot of stuff's happened, so nothing can stop this little boy from recapping the day. The Chris is Cliff's notes way. My wife is just looking at me, shaking her head in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I might, yeah, be moving, I, would, I might be moving back with my parents, not to do that. <laughs> I would love to see like video context or like a video of her <laughs> reacting to your cliff notes without any context from the episode. <laughs> Just how disappointed she is. Yeah, no, right? She's, she's, she's cry man. She's crying in the corner. <laughs> Hey, this is Alex from Diz His, along with Chris from the No New... Wait, what, are we, what is this an ad for? This is an ad for Diz His on No New Friends. Oh my gosh, I'm so out of place. So yeah, we're on a Disney podcast, right, Alex? Yeah, you and me now. Um, we're doing a Disney podcast, Disney history every week on Tuesdays. It drops. Social media is Diz His Pod. Yeah, if you ever need cleansing of the uh, obscurities that you hear on this show, check us out on Diz His Podcast, where we do something way more innocent. And if you love Alex's segment, which is me, my history segment, then you'll love our full episode of Disney History. Yeah. If you want a big load of Alex, listen to the Diz His podcast. You're going to love it. A uh, little bit of me, a lot of Alex. Uh, it's like half and half, but a lot of Alex. A lot of Alex. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a lot of you too. You also give up a big load yourself. That's fair. Chris, what'd you talk about on Dishes this week? Before I get into the uh, what we did on Dishes this week, which you're gonna stick or want to stick around for because it was really fun, I was watching George of the Jungle, um, which is also Disney related, and the way he swings from those trees got me all hot and heavy because uh, made me think a little bit mm. about my friend over at Sandpiper Vacations. Um, you know. We're getting ready to record our episode 169 of No New Friends After Dark, of the No New Friends podcast, After Dark Edition. And it got me just um, remembering about when I did get to meet Nick in person. And why do I associate the two? Well, because when we met, you know, he uh, he admired my little duck balls. <laughs> <laughs> And if you have little duck balls that need a little trimming, just check out Manscaped. Uh, use promo code NNF for 20% off your discount. That's manscaped.com. So anyway, if you want to book a vacation, <laughs> if you want to, if you want to book a vacation about as good as George of the Jungle swings from a tree, you're going to want to have to go over to sandpipervacations.com. Contact Nick, who will book your vacation for you. Don't even have to lift a finger. Because I didn't. Well, I did. I did lift a few fingers. Um, yeah, just to, you know, touch the duck balls. <laughs> just, a, just a touch. <laughs> um, seriously, uh, book a vacation with Nick or I'll kill you. Um, <laughs> SandpiperVacations.com. Tell them that any friends podcast sent you. Just kidding. The, 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 uh, these, these travel companies, these Royal Caribbean Disney's will kill you with their prices if you don't book through Nick. Everyone I know books through Nick. And you will book through Nick doing a Jedi mind trick. You will book through, you, you will book through Sam <laughs> vacations. Uh, seriously, they'll reach out to him. He's a great guy, very informed in the cruise industry, very informed at Disney world. And, um, you're going to be more informed if you book through him, because he'll send you a million emails that you'll learn every email, every email he sends me. I just feel dumber that I didn't book with him in the past. Cause I'm like, okay, I had no idea I could have saved this much money on this and this and that, whatever. Um, this week on Disney, we do a draft for Magic Kingdom. Who wins, Alex or I? It's really fun because we have a, uh, one of our Patreons come on this week, and he interviewed all the other Patreons with their favorite slow rides, transportation rides, um, meet and greets. And Alex and I go back and forth, and we do a draft this week. And uh, someone wins, and someone loses. So you're going to want to listen to see who wins and loses. It's a really fun episode. You can play along. We're going to upload the the uh, choices with the answer key on our blog. So don't want to miss that. Thank you for that, Chris. We have a few other shows that we would like to suggest to you listeners as well. I forget the specific thing that Scott always says here. Um, 
But we do recommend Don't Wreck Yourself, where Ryan discusses the things that are wrecking the internet. There's also From Ashes to Awesome, where Chuck discusses his journey from addiction to recovery. And the Black Lincoln Collective podcast, one of my favorite exhibitions at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. And they're going to be coming on to the No New Friends podcast next month. I am so looking forward to that. I'm sure all of you are as well. Uh, Mary's not here, so I'm not sure about a mental health moment with Dr. Edward Samara, but I have faith. I believe that he will rise. Uh, Sarah, what is coming up on the Nerd Archive podcast this week? So this week they're talking more Secret Invasion. It's getting better and better if you guys are watching it. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, Lewis has a special guest on with the rest of the crew. So, yep, they've got somebody else joining them. Uh, and they talk about Star Wars and more nerdy villains and stuff. So it should be very good. It's a great episode. I listened to it live. Highly recommend Nerd Archive yes. podcast. And Chris, what podcasts do you have to recommend for us? First of all, I'm going to recommend a YouTube channel, Big Beautiful Diz, who is Dane. Just hit his 200th milestone. And what did he do for his short of the video? Not a video. He did a charity live stream, which was super cool. Did it for uh, Alzheimer's research. He raised a bunch of money. Uh, shout out to you, Dane. Congratulations on the 200th video. Anyway, so I also recommend Studio 21, the baseball podcast, where they break down the scores of every single game every week. F- your newspaper. <laughs> Gosh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you can also learn how to get a master's in ghost hunting if you listen to that podcast. It's fantastic. <laughs> I also recommend Remy's Roundtable, who has the greatest 75 logos in all of podcasts. Um, <laughs> you never know what logo you're going to get when you listen to Remy's Roundtable, and it's always 99% good, 1% bad, because there's something terribly, terribly wrong with it, like a backward state or a uh, watermark. Um, no, Remy's Roundtable is the <laughs> Florida theme park podcast. You can listen to him on all streaming platforms, and I highly recommend it. I listen to all of their episodes live, and then I listen to them again. That's incredible. You just listed a lot of my favorite shows, so thank you, Chris. Well, we didn't list all of them, because there's a brand new podcast that I want to tell everybody about, and episode one came out today, so when you're hearing this a couple days ago, uh, but Cases of continuity, uh, which is the sophisticated gentleman himself. He reveals his real name. So if you want to know his real name, uh, just listen to that because we've never said his real name on this show. Uh, Name reveal. (laughs) The name reveal is there. It's such a good podcast. Season one is taking on the Bond series and he talks about each of each each of the movies and in its place in the larger uh bond universe i'm not a bond fan i don't like bond but i found it's it's extremely interesting hearing sophisticated gentlemen's take on the bond series and uh and everything that goes with it. it it's really really good so check that out it's uh, you're on spotify uh you're on apple yep yeah so check that out that's cases of continuity Thank you, Scott. I sincerely appreciate it. On behalf of Game Master Ryan, Sarah, Chris, Mary, and Scott, I am the Sophisticated Gentleman. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Okay, bye!